Welcome. We have a few songs in the service this evening, but uh, there's, please make note that there's uh, limited amounts of verses as, as we sing. So our first one is uh, in our brown hymnal, number 331, the advent of our king, uh, verses one through three. And our reading is printed for us from the 80th Psalm. Hear us, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who sit enthroned between the cherubim, shine forth, awaken your might, come and save us, restore us, O God, make your face shine upon us that we may be saved. Return to us, O God Almighty, Look down from heaven and see. Watch over this vine. The root of your right hand has planted. The sun you have raised up for yourself. Let your hand rest on the man at your right hand. The son of man you have raised up for yourself. Then we will not turn away from you. Revive us and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God Almighty. Make your face shine upon us, that we may be saved.
and we continue with the prayer printed in our bulletin. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ. We have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. Our devotion for this uh, first uh, midweek service in Advent is from Romans 15, beginning at verse 4. Whatever was written in the former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. They say that the color of hope is supposed to be blue. And that's part of the reason we have the colors blue up for uh, Advent. I look around and our our pews are blue and our carpet's blue. And uh, it's a beautiful color. God must have known, created us in some way so that when we look and we see a blue sky, it just does something for us. It kind of gives us hope. And he talks about encouragement and endurance a couple times here. Endurance for those times when it's hard just to get through a day or a week or a time or season in our life. And encouragement that we will get through it and that there's hope, as they say sometimes at the end of the tunnel. In verse 5, he goes on to say, May the God of endurance and encouragement... So it's almost like a name of God. It's saying that God, by definition, is the God of endurance. Through him, we can continue to go on. And he's the God of encouragement. And he encourages us throughout our journey. May the God of encouragement and endurance grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus. And of course, God gave his son not only to reconcile us to him, he gave us his son so that we'd be reconciled to one another. And he calls on all who would believe and follow him to forgive uh, one another in order that we can put past 
He, he teaches us the Lord prayer. You know, when he, they said, Lord, teach us to pray, this is the only prayer he, they gave, he gave them. And it's really good to go through the Lord's prayer phrase by phrase and meditate on it and use like an outline. But it's also just beautiful as a devotional. Every time we say, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, that's what clears the way so that we can live in harmony together. And he goes on to say that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 7 says, Therefore welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised, that's the Jewish people, Israel, to show God's truthfulness in order, there is a reason, to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and that's the promise given to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and down through the ages, passed on generation to generation. And in order that, the purpose is that the Gentiles, not just the Jewish people, but the whole world, might glorify God for his mercy. And that's the hope that we have that there will be a one world order one day, but that one world order will be under the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and he will rule and he will govern. And that gives us great hope, looking forward to the future. And then he starts, well, several verses from the scriptures. Uh, He's, when he says uh, what was written in the former days, he's in the scriptures, he's talking about the things in the past in the Hebrew scriptures, and he quotes them one, two, three, four times in a row in this chapter. He says, therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. In other words, this is true diversity. All peoples, all races, all peoples of the world will be singing together to praise the Lord God united through his blood. Then he quotes another scripture, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. In other words, a gathering of all the nations together with Israel to rejoice in the Lord. Then another scripture he quotes, Praise the Lord, O you Gentiles, and let all the peoples extol him. And the fourth one is the root of Jesse. He remembered that there was Jesse and he had a son named David. And David was promised this eternal kingdom, this throne that would come to one of his descendants and that would come to Jesus. So the scripture says the root of Jesse will come, that's Jesus, even he who arises to rule the Gentiles. Now normally when we have someone who wants to rule us, that is a very negative thought because we can't trust people. Human beings have this sin nature and it just seems when people get power, they want more, they never want to give it up, never have enough money. But there is one when the Lord God, the God of love, the God of hope, the God of endurance, and the God of encouragement, when he rules, that gives us hope. So he quotes the scripture, the root of Jesse will come Even he who arises to rule the Gentiles, in him will the Gentiles hope. I I just want to share just a little dream. I'm not trying to make too much out of it. But uh, personally, I've had some reasons to go through some grief, some loss lately. And it kind of affected my dream life. At night, you just kind of have dark kind of dreams sometimes, you know? And your thoughts kind of play tricks with you. Anyway, so just before I woke up, I think it was a day or ago, all I can say is that in this dream, it was like, you know how you have peripheral vision? Uh, We can only see, (laughs) they do eye tests. How far can this hand go before you lose sight of it? So we kind of have a window of what we can see. Well, in this dream, all of a sudden, just everything opened up like this super wide screen, but that went on forever and it was blue skies. 
And I just had a feeling like when the Lord comes, there's going to be blue skies and hope and, and, and joy forever. And it's that hope that keeps us hanging in there, having the endurance to keep on going. So he ends it with this beautiful, beautiful verse 13. And this is, well, my hope for you. May the God of hope, and just like he's the God of endurance and he's the God of encouragement, he's also the God of hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. Can't you just see Christmas cards with those words, joy and peace, that comes from him in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. And you see, when we hang on to faith, no matter what, we know there is always hope in the future because God hears our prayers, he answers our prayers, and he never fails us. So that brings us to our prayer time. And there are prayers that I printed up in the bulletin. But before we do that, I just want to share uh, three people. Uh, one is Rita Exman, and she's at the Kettering uh, Health Center. She had a stroke. And uh, she's coming along well. Right? And she's 93 years old. I just can't believe it. Uh, but she's in the hospital recovering. And uh, Joanne Mansky, we just got a prayer request this afternoon uh, that she had fallen and broken her hip. So we definitely want to pray for her. Rachel Good also is coming up uh, surgery. And uh, I'd just like to ask before we start, are there any other prayer requests that any of you have on your hearts that you want to... Uh, Sure, before we pray. Yeah. Pray for Jenny. Thank you. Oh, really? Okay, and that's John and, John and Peggy. Peggy? Yes. Okay. Well, okay, thank you. Okay, so Kathy and Richard then. Yeah. And both had hip replacements? Uh, Kathy had a knee replacement, Richard had a hip Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, the 21st of December, I've got a eye surgery. Oh, okay. Yes.
I'll tell you what, since you very properly sat in the front row, uh, I'll just start us out. And if anyone would like to pray out loud, you're, you're more than welcome. And if not, that's okay too. Uh, but there will be an opportunity shortly if you'd like to. And then I'll continue by praying for these folks too. And then we'll continue with the prayer that's printed in our bulletin. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for being the God of encouragement and the God of endurance and the God of all hope. Lord, as we pray now, we pray for your blessing that you would lead us and guide us. Help us to pray according to your will in your spirit. In Jesus' name.
Friday, especially for Kathy, that's our next door neighbor. I know that she resists pain and she doesn't push herself in, in rehabilitation. And as she has this new replacement, I pray that you would strengthen her resolve to quit and she would push herself and that she would be able to overcome this new replacement and, and become mobile and be able to actively move. Pray for Richard, Lord. You're doing your supernatural rest for him in your healing power as he recovers. I just pray, Lord, that you would, he would experience you in a new and deeper way. And I pray for Debbie, Lord, when you've got a book, when you've got a love for him, Lord, that is going through pain and suffering and, and endorsement. It's, it's difficult. So I pray that you come alongside of Debbie. I pray that you put your arms behind him, hug him, Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you sent your healing through your Son and it flowed out. It came into darkness and unclean spirits and demons were cast out and people were restored and healed. And you heal us in all ways. You, you heal us emotionally. You heal us spiritually. You heal us physically. And we pray that your healing would flow. We pray again especially for John and Peggy, who are grieving over their son, for Kathy, for Richard, for healing. We pray for Denny's mother that your perfect will would happen, that your perfect timing, that you would bless the family. We pray for Russ as he, as he, uh, as he has his eye treated, Lord, for healing for him. We think of Joe Washko, Lord, we pray for Jenny, Rita, Joanne, and we also pray for Rachel, who will be getting surgery in January. And Lord, we bring all of our cares and all of our requests and all of our lives to you, knowing that you give us hope because you love us, because you answer prayer. So we pray, stir up your power, O Lord, to rescue us from the dangers of this dark world by the advent of your Son, that we may ever walk in his light and learn the way of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, though we do not know the day of your Son's appearing, grant that we would always be prepared by sending us faithful pastors and teachers who will boldly proclaim your word of law and gospel to us, that we may be co constantly encouraged and built up in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God of Jacob, you have established your kingdom as a beacon to call all nations unto yourself. Teach us to walk in the light of your peace. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord of love, visit our homes and defend us from the temptation to walk in the works of darkness, that husbands and wives may love one another and raise their children in the faith. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, you are the authority to whom all temporal authorities must bow. Give wisdom and godly insight to our president, our governor, and all who would make administer or judge our laws. 
Grant peace among the nations that swords may be beaten to plowshares and spears to pruning hooks. Lord, in your mercy. O loving Father, you alone know the day and the hour when our Lord Jesus will come again in glory. Keep us steadfast in the one true faith that we may ever be ready for his reappearing through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And please stand for the blessing and, and our final hymn. First from Romans 15. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. The grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen.